Today, I want to look at naming conventions inside of Java and what does that mean for us? Now, these are just standard conventions and if you work on a project, you might find that they're a little bit different from place to place, but this is kind of the Java standard and how you're typically going to see things done in Java. In my particular case here, I have a public class and I have a class name. Now, one of the rules, and this is something that you cannot change, is your file name must be the same as your main class name. Now, in my case, my class name is naming conventions and my file name is naming conventions.java. This is real easy to get right. We shouldn't have any problem with this at all. The second thing you're going to notice is my class names always start with a capital letter. Now, this isn't technically a Java requirement, but it is a standard thing. So you can see in my case where I had naming conventions, I start with a capital N. The second thing you're going to notice right away is that Java uses what's sometimes referred to as camel case or humpback notation. Now, which you prefer to call it depends upon a lot of factors. The names are basically synonymous, but that means that the first letter of each word is going to be capitalized. Now, the very first word is not always capitalized. It is in this case because it is a class name, but in other cases, we may not see that. Let's take a look at where we wouldn't see that real quick. I'm going to come in. I'm going to create a private property for my Java class. So this is going to be a string. And so default name. Now, default name no starts with a lowercase letter. That's because in standard default Java notation, the first letter of an attribute or a method will be lowercase. The first letter of each word after the first word, if it's a multi-word attribute or method like this is, will be capitalized. Once again, this is just a standard. And the idea is to make it easier to read because my eye will follow along, it will see the capital letter and go, oh, I know that this is a new word. And that's very helpful in certain circumstances where you might have multiple words put together and you could split them up in different ways. So this just makes it a lot easier for us to work with. Now, if I have a simple name, for example, this property that I called value, notice it is all lowercase. Once again, this is just a standard that we use when working with our properties in our methods. Now, as for a specific method, well, we'll see that in just a second. So for example, let's say get value. So this would be a getter for my property value. Well, that just means that we're going to use a lowercase g for the first word in our method name, and then we'll capitalize the v in value as a second word. That way it's easy to see what we're getting. Now, we could have written it all lowercase, but this is the standard notation. Another thing that we'll commonly do is we're going to put all of our attributes for a class up at the top of the file. Now, this isn't required, but it helps us stay organized and maintain the maintainability of our code over a long project. So if we have a project that we're working on for months or even years, and something we might have to maintain for years after that, we want to be as organized as possible. You never know when a little throwaway project that you're doing that's only going to be around for six weeks turns into six months, six years, or even longer. Everyone who's been a developer for more than a few years has run into one or more of these applications. And this is why we do things like this to help with our maintainability. Likewise, just like I have a get value here, I want to have all my methods that deal with value as close as I can. That way, it's easy to keep organized and to find my different methods.
Here you can see, just as an example, I've got three different methods that deal with my value. Now, right now they're empty, they're not doing anything, but I would keep all of these together if I could. That way, once again, maintainability of this project becomes much, much easier. Now, if I'm building a method that's going to have my main method, that's going to run my application, even if I have other attributes and properties in it, like, for example, in this case, what I will do is I will put that main method as my very first method, since it's the one that's got the launch, and it just makes it easier for us to find. Because of the rules of Java, this main method must follow the format public, static, void, then be named main, and it will take a parameter of string args. If any one of those is different, it's not public, it doesn't take the string args as a parameter, this method will not run automatically when you go to call the function. So this is one of those rules that you do have to follow, and you're going to want to watch over time. Understand the difference between the rules that are required for Java, as well as the ones that are just good common practices. The good common practices aren't required, but will help you write your code, keep your code clean and maintainable over the lifetime of the project, whether it's just a few days or a few years.